Welcome back to Things That Are Harder. Today we're going to talk about difficulty settings. Right up front I'm going to say this. I strongly believe in difficulty settings. I think your game should have them. It improves the accessibility of your game, makes your game available for more people to play. And ultimately, isn't that what we're looking for? Is to provide something that as many people as possible can have fun with. I know there are people who disagree with this statement, who want to gatekeep certain experiences for themselves and to say that certain games should be extremely challenging and there should be no quarter given and that if you aren't good enough you shouldn't be playing this game. I'm not going to try to convince those people that they're wrong but I imagine that if you're watching this video in the first place you may not be one of those people. If you are I guess you're free to your opinion but I do believe that difficulty settings are really good and I think there's an opportunity to do more with them than most games currently do. Difficulty settings are interesting because at the base level, maybe they're not actually harder than you think. You have three difficulty levels, easy, normal, and hard, and you can implement those at a pretty rudimentary level by simply making it so that in combat, on easy, enemies have less hit points and do less damage. On hard, enemies have more hit points and do more damage. But that's a pretty basic level to implement your difficulty settings, and if you do that, you'll have difficulty settings settings, but they're not going to be particularly satisfying. So let's dig in a little further. First of all, sometimes you see two additional difficulty settings. You see above hard, the nightmare difficulty setting, and below easy, you see a narrative difficulty setting. I think it's worthwhile walking through each of these five and defining them. These aren't universally portable definitions, but it's useful to have a broad general thematic definition for each, as well as some specific rubrics that your QV department can hold up your system against to see if you're meeting your desired behavior for each difficulty level. So easy, it's low challenge, but it's not no challenge. This means you should have to pay attention in combat and sometimes in very difficult circumstances, you may die a time or two in a combat and you have to pay more attention, the challenge ramps up. But you typically shouldn't get stuck on any individual combat for too long. Maybe you'll reach points where it requires a little bit of grinding you have to go and then come back normal is that balance base level challenge so this is going to be variable based on your specific game here it's reasonable to expect that the player is going to require variable tactics depending on different enemies and it's basically where you start your balance at hard is very challenging this should require you to engage in all of the systems to some degree you should be optimizing your gear if your game has gear you should be paying attention to tech things like that. Chances are you're probably dying in combat several times before you figure out exactly what's going on. Here you might even want a rubric such that if QA is able to get through the combat and they haven't leveled up or they haven't used one of your mechanics, this could be a flag that your combat is balanced wrong or possibly might be uncovering some form of unintended exploit. Nightmare is an extreme challenge. It's important to note that it used to be the case that first party certification actually had to be able to get through your game on all of your difficulty levels. I don't believe that cert is enforced any longer, but I would definitely check before you implement too difficult of a nightmare mode. Here you are expecting that your player is engaging fully into all of the systems, possibly even taking advantage of exploits that might exist. Nightmare is about the challenge in and of itself. So I don't think with this difficulty mode you have to worry about flow or how the combat fits within the overall structure of your game. The combat can be basically a self-contained challenge that the player has to bang their head against over and over again until they figure it out. I honestly think that the narrative difficulty level is the most difficult to implement. Here you want it such that players don't really lose combat at all, so that's easy enough to make happen. You can make them take no damage, but the thing that makes it challenging to implement effectively is ideally you want to maintain the storytelling of combat. You don't want combat just to auto-skip. You don't want someone who's very 
unskilled at your combat system to have to swing a gun around until eventually, laboriously, they manage to one-shot every single creature in combat because either of those things throws the pacing of your game way off. So in a perfect world, a narrative difficulty setting would actually basically play a little cinematic of the combat, bringing across the emotional impact of the combat, but removing the challenge of the combat from the player. Now that's not really very practical. So you're trying to balance between making the combat unlosable and maintaining some degree of storytelling. But up front there, I mentioned how you would actually implement a difficulty setting. So having creatures do more damage, have more hit points, that's a good starting point. But you have to think about other things that your enemies can do. Can they stun the player? And if they can, then even on the easy difficulty levels, potentially players are getting stun locked, even though they're not taking very much damage. So you might want to consider for other effects that aren't direct damage effects, reducing the duration of those effects. Do some of your creatures have timing vulnerabilities where they are only able to be damaged within certain windows? Again, if you don't adjust that at different difficulty settings, then potentially you have a situation where that combat is unwinnable by someone with lower reflexes because they can't hit the timing properly. The other thing to think about when it comes to simply increasing the amount of damage that enemies do, especially at the higher difficulty levels, at hard, you may be one-shotting the player with some of the attacks in the game. So what do you do at Nightmare in that case? Can't just make them do more damage because it's already effectively infinite. It's already one-shotting them. So you need to have other ways potentially to ramp up the difficulty of these characters, potentially by increasing their animation speed or removing the tells they have on some of their attacks or reducing their cooldown time. But really here, we're just touching on the surface of difficulty settings for combat. And often in a lot of games, combat difficulty settings are all that are exposed to the player. But I think there are opportunities for more difficulty settings to increase the accessibility of your game. If you have jumping puzzles or other exploration and movement based gameplay, is there an opportunity for difficulty settings on that, making the jumping more forgiving or less forgiving, changing the speed of platforms that you have to jump on, slowing them down or speeding them up, making them pause more or less based on the movement or exploration difficulty setting. Similarly, I think there is an opportunity to explore difficulty settings for your social interactions or conversations. Perhaps at the harder difficulty settings, your tone icons go away. Or at the lower difficulty settings, you highlight the golden path, if your conversations have a golden path. Because different people have different challenges playing your game. And some people get trapped inside of conversations, stuck on the analysis of the options. So you can actually potentially help those people have a better experience with your game. Like narrative mode for combat, I think you don't want to remove the storytelling because it's still a key part of your game. But you may want to look for ways for that setting to optimize the flow, making the player make less choices that they're getting overwhelmed by, but still experiencing the game as it's intended to be experienced. Now, if you do introduce more difficulty settings, difficulty settings for different aspects of your game, you are increasing the testing burden on your game. You may not be entering into a combinatorial explosion because a lot of these settings won't interact with each other very much. It's unlikely that your social difficulty and your combat difficulty are going to have much bearing on each other, but your exploration and your combat setting might. And if you introduce other difficulty settings around inventory management or crafting, then again, they start to interact with each other, changing the way that the experience comes together. And you can get into a situation or you could get into a situation where you have a combinatorial explosion and you could render your game very difficult to fully test. Additionally, and I suspect one of the reasons why we don't see a lot of these different difficulty settings is that this
this is a bit of an interface nightmare. It is difficult enough to get most players to set their difficulty in games right now. Many games will put it up front in an effort to get players to engage with it. But still, most people will just leave it wherever it defaults and play the game that way. So if you suddenly have three or four or five difficulty settings, getting your average player to fully consider what you're asking them to consider when they're setting up these difficulty settings is probably unreasonable. Instead, you might need to figure out a way to set their difficulty for them or to give them a test and then base the difficulty upon that test. Really, a lot of things in game development would be so much easier if you could just start each game with a psychological profile test and then use those results to set up a bunch of things in your game. Not sure most players would go for that. One final thought on difficulty settings for things where you get a lot of data coming in about player performance. So combat or jumping puzzles, that sort of thing. It's possible to auto balance the difficulty to the player's experience. This is actually what the combat difficulty in Sonic Chronicles of the Dark Brotherhood did. It actually used the length of time it was taking you to get through combat to automatically and dynamically adjust the difficulty of subsequent combats to try to keep you in this state of challenge. I would argue that probably Sonic Chronicles is balanced sort of too easy, but it was trying to keep you having to pay attention, feeling the challenge of combat. If you were getting through combat too easily, it actually made combat more difficult. If you were losing combat too much, it made combat easier. I like this under certain circumstances, but be careful because if your game is known for being challenging, you certainly don't want players to feel like you're automatically balancing the game under them because then they are not able to hold themselves up to a specific bar of challenge. You wouldn't want a Demon Souls to automatically become easier because you were dying a lot because the point of a game like that is that challenge and while I would be perfectly fine if Demon Souls had an easy mode I would feel quite differently if the game was simply becoming easier and easier until eventually I could smash my way through every challenge. So why are difficulty settings a thing that's harder than you think? Two reasons. One, because they're so easy to implement quickly and badly, you need to really pay attention to doing a good job. But the second reason is I think there's a possibility with difficulty settings for the game industry to reach beyond what it currently does, to do more, to build games that are more accessible through some innovation in difficulty settings. As is often the case, this may fall to the indie development scene to explore the space, to try some new things, to find some new solutions. I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, please give this video a like, share it with someone that you think would find it interesting. I will see you again soon. Thank you.